Then the natural question is what are the effective pr uh, prevention policies that can be implemented? So that's the, the thing that uh, we're going to write a model to think about. So what we do in this paper exactly is that we're going to build a model of sexual behavior. Given that, you know, oops, you know, most, most transmission through heterosexual sex, higher transmission risk for women, we want a model that is going to capture these features. Uh, we're also going to allow uh, for behavior responses and general equilibrium uh, uh, effects. Uh, and that's what we think that it's good that economists can bring to this, to this uh, discussion. Uh, we're going to take our model and parameterize to capture stylized features of, uh, of uh, sex, marriage, and HIV, in particular in Malawi. That's the country that we're going to focus our attention. And we're going to use this model to explore a variety of prevention policies. We have tons of them in the paper. Today, I'll probably go over one or two of them uh, in more detail. Um, we think that, to the best of our knowledge, this is the f uh, first general equilibrium model that's potentially capable of examining these uh, HIV issues. And what uh, we want to highlight with our results is that some prevention policies may uh, backfire in the sense that it, instead of decreasing the HIV prevalence rate, it can increase the HIV prevalence rate, exactly due to the, the behavioral changes and the general equilibrium effects uh, that are going to play a very important role in the model. So I'm going to be uh, more precise exactly what kind of uh, behavioral changes and general equilibrium <laughs> effects uh, when I go through the policy experiments. Um, so there's a large related literature uh, when it comes to the study of HIV AIDS, some, a lot of in economics and a lot uh, outside of economics. So there are some uh, theoretical studies of HIV with simplified uh, 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 stylized models like Kramer, for example. There's a very large literature on epidemiological simulations that, don't that usually don't allow for behavioral adjustments, just like... Uh, um, some transitions from one state to the next that people don't respond behavior from, uh, from to the policies. There's also some randomized field experiments. Uh, here is a l uh, some of them. What is the work of Amin Young taking on this? There, I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, it's that's actually, that's it's the actually, right? yes, but it's actually, he's going to focus on something that we won't. I'll, uh, so, Actually, let me take that question. So uh, what we're going to focus uh, uh, on with our model is the spread of the disease. Something that we're not going to focus is how the HIV epidemic relates to development, which I guess that's uh, his focus. And there are other papers that talk about specifically these issues like uh, Raul Santolaria Lopez, Ferreira et al, that they look, for example, things in education and how that and, and, and experience, that experienced workers die, etc. These issues, I'm not going to talk about today. What I'm going to talk about is use a model to look at the spread of the disease itself. That's what we're going to do. Philipson is not here, is it? Uh, we do cite him. Uh, <laughs> um, yes? Development has feedback on transmission, I'm sure. Um, we, we are going to, well, I'm not going to show you today, but we, we have some experiments that we show how, uh, for example, uh, uh, income levels affect, affect, uh, uh, affect uh, 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 the, the, the how people behave, et cetera. Yes. Uh, as I said, I'll briefly mention it, but I won't go into detail. But we're not going to have you know, the two-sided thing, like the disease and development and vice versa. Um, okay, so... What we have, what our model is going to have is, gonna, is a few features that uh, some of the features are present in some of the papers, some in other papers, but not, uh, but our model is going to encompass both, you know, general equilibrium effects 
and also behavioral changes in an equilibrium model that we're going to have HIV being a, an equilibrium outcome when we aggregate all the behavior from uh, individual agents. Okay, so let me jump right into the model. Um, so uh, as I said, this is uh, a, a, an econ economist view of, of the model, so people are going to make their decisions rationally. Uh, we're going to have men and women uh, that they're going to be uh, a bit different. Uh, and I'll talk about the differences in a, in a second. And these agents are going to make uh, risky decisions, potentially risky decisions. So they, they're going to decide whether to have sex, but that's risky. You can get infected or not. You can be abstinent. You can have some casual relationships, short term relationships or longer term duration uh, relationships like marriage. You can use a condom, which makes you less likely to, uh, to, to, to mm -hmm. get infected mm -hmm. or not. All of these are going to be choices that people are going to make. In order to have sex, you're going to need a partner. And that partner is going to be found through search. And there's some heterogeneity uh, uh, in the economy. So people are going to dif- Excuse me, I thought, yes. I Um, we have, it, it, uh, that it's related a lot to prostitution, which you don't have to search very hard for one. Um, so we actually have a lot of data. We, I'm, gonna sh well, I'm not going to talk a lot, but we have a lot of data from uh, risky sexual behavior uh, in Malawi, the microdata that we can look for. And people engage in a lot of risky behavior outside of prostitution. So it, mi it might be true that, that, that prostitution plays a role, but uh, I'm going to show you some data uh, and that we're even going to use as targets uh, in our calibration procedure that shows this, how risky their behavior is. But even that's not true in Africa generally. There's so many modes of transmission of HIV in Africa. That's one, but there's also just mistresses, and you wouldn't call those prostitutes in the, in the, in the normal pecuniary sense. There's other methods. Right, right. So I'll show you the data, exactly what these guys are doing there. So I'll show you. Um, okay, so as I was saying, so there's going to be some heterogeneity uh, among agents. Uh, in particular, uh, we're going to have different types of people that differ in the degree of patience. So people that are less patient, they're going to behave in a more reckless fashion. Uh, and also, we're going to have young immature individuals that also differ in patients. So the idea is that younger people are, uh, are, are more impatient, less patient, and they're going to also behave uh, in a riskier fashion. Of course, there's some heterogeneity that's going to arise endogenously based on your risky choices and what kinds of shocks you, you're, you're faced with uh, along your life cycle. So, well, why do we um, need, why is this an essential feature of AIDS that people differ in degree of patients? So what we, we need that to, to get, for, so for example, so young versus mature people, so we need that to, to match, essentially to match the data of the, 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 the prevalence rates and the behavior of young people. There are, there should be difference in beliefs. We are going to have beliefs. Uh, I'm going to talk about beliefs in a second. Uh, but we need, we need, uh, a, 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 a group that, by the way, is going to be a small group in the overall population that behaves in a more risky fashion. And you could also, I mean, I guess it's a little bit similar question. You could do it via, I guess, preferences towards risk or preferences towards sex versus other things. Or, yeah, there's a lot of way to play with everything. That is and true. I'm assuming that's like a policy conclusion that might matter. Um, there is true, and in fact, the model is set up in such a way that it, it allows for a lot of heterogeneity. So much heterogeneity that we could not ever possibly calibrate such a model. Uh, and, that's, and, and that was the, 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 the feature that we decided to make people heterogeneous on. We could, and we ran some policies that they differ. For example, people are going to have utility of protected versus unprotected sex, and that could be allowed to differ also. What is the value added of making people heterogeneous? What that is going to bias is 
that is going to help us uh, match the data. What in the data is going to bring these guys? So to, to put it differently, how can a, how can a data how what, what in the data would it, would would, it, would uh, set apart from my model and Raquel's model? Is that the question? No, I mean I guess. What's the value of these nine? No, no, I'm not to sit back now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it matters for him because because uh, it affects mortality. So whether you get ill when you're young versus old matters. That's not the question about how much you saw. It's about the patients with the mutation. So the ones who have a very different behavior from the from the get on. Um, so the future of the data, so if I, if I had people to be too, if I had people, all, all people are like patient people. If I, that, the degree of heterogeneity, which if we shut that down would be essentially none, ex ante heterogeneity, uh, the model could not be consistent with the sexual behavior of people that I'm going to show you when I get to the calibration part, like condom usage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the HIV prevalence rate. I just cannot, I just cannot have both. So you're saying that because people face such a high risk of getting infected, it's very hard to get them to stop wearing condoms when they have sex. Because the utility of getting infected is so, is, is so or the, the value of getting infected is so negative. Is that, is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to, to clarify. Right, right, right. Uh, what I'm saying is that it would be too hard to have like just everybody being exactly the same, making the sexual behavior choices that I see, uh, and and that all all of the all, all of the of the heterogeneity in the in the sexual behavior that I see in the data. Like what? Some people have so many partners. Yeah. For example, age, for example. For example, the age profile, I'm going to show you a lot of age profiles. A, a lot of that heterogeneity I could not guess, I, I could not get with like essentially a homogeneous agent model. Like the frequency, frequency of relationships will identify people. Like frequency. Yeah, we have frequent, uh, I, I think, we I mean, uh, from a microeconomist point of view, I found it, I find it extremely odd that people are concerned whether the originating exists or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think the better way to address this, and I think that's what they're getting at, is exactly to describe the features of the data that will require you to allow for this heterogeneity. Okay. Um, so given the way my slides are set up, I'm going to have to wait a little bit until I get to the, to the calibration section, and I'm going to show you so what... That's right. What it is. I mean, of course it's Right. right, right, right. So I'll, I'll show you exactly what we're targeting and how well we'll do that. Um, okay, and then I, as I said, it, it, as an in an equilibrium model, HIV prevalence rates are going to be determined in equilibrium. So the demographics, uh, we're going to have a measure mu i of type i a. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I skipped one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, I, what I'm saying is that you know you can die of HIV and you can die of everything else. That and everything and else is exogenous death. Will not uh, uh, dump you if you've got HIV. No, divorce is going to be exogenous. Uh, it's just going to be a shock of divorce. But you know, uh, you you know, you learn you learn from spending a certain amount of your spouse if a divorce happens, how likely you are that to have uh, acquired it, get infected from the spouse. Okay, okay so, um, so there's this uh, measure uh, mu i of type i agents born every period, the type here, as I said, could be, they could be heterogeneous in a lot of dimensions here, we're just going to have a heterogeneity on the discount factors. And uh, people are born healthy here, okay, so everybody that's born doesn't have HIV. There's some, I told you there are young and old agents, so there's going to be some stochastic agent that a young person is going to become mature. And that's what I was telling you before, there's going to be some people that's going to die of other natural causes, other kinds of death, and people that are going to die from HIV each period. And for simplicity, 
if people die for these other reasons, the couples die together. Okay, so it's a model of sexual behavior, so sex. Uh, people are gonna have, are gonna find a partner through search effort. People have utility from having sex. Uh, there's gonna be essentially two kinds of sex in this economy, protected, where on, uh, where condom is used, or unprotected. So U is the utility of having unprotected sex, and P is the utility of having protected sex. By assumption, all sex within long-term relationships or marriages are, uh, is unprotected, uh, and you get some additional utility benefit or cost from these long-term relationships. So if, if I have a, a, a casual, uh, unprotected, short-term relationship, I get utility U. P, if it's the same thing but it's protected. If uh, every period, if I'm in a long-term relationship, I get U plus L. That's a, like a state, so these people really commit. Really commit to the, re to the relationship? Really commit to, they have, they, it's a state variable that you cannot break. Is that correct? You what is a state variable? Long-term relationship? Long-term relationship, yes. You commit to that, yes. I'll show you exactly how in a second. You commit to that in the sense that if, if, I'm, uh, if I'm searching for a partner and I find a partner I match in the long-term relationship, okay, so that's it, you're in that state, you're in that bin, uh, until uh, some exogenous breakup uh, probability psi or my spouse develops symptoms and then the match breaks up. But other than, th other than those two events happening, yes, it's they commit to that. How do you think of it? How do I think of long-term relationships? Say that again, I can't hear. Mr. Clinton is a long-term relationship, but he had a short-term on the side, right? So, so <laughs> no, that's not going to, we're not going to have that here. Uh, why? It's going to make things way more complicated. I'll show you where in a couple of slides. What we're going to have, though, is that this probability psi here of this exogenous breakup is going to be a little higher than the divorce rates that we see in the data. So you can think of the uh, Monica Lewinsky as being, you know... No? Okay. So <laughs> yes? HIV transmission is not just sort of the number of sexual partners or the number of sexual encounters, but it's how you structure them. So meaning concurrent relationships versus serial monogamy. And so people think that, you know, in some societies, people have the same number of relationships, and in fact, the same number of casual relationships, but structure them very differently, kind of from end to end, rather than concurrently. And so being able to have actually two unprotected long-term relationships going on at the same time, you know, these things actually some people think might be the very drivers of the epidemic in Africa and the fact that it's an epidemic among the generalized population and not among right. you know, sort of these specialized <coughs> risk groups. Okay, so the, the short-term relationships here are gonna, are gonna take a quarter. So you're gonna, I can get matched and have sex with someone for a quarter and another person in another quarter. I can have you know, four partners pretty quickly. Um, in the long-term relationship, we don't allow for concurrent relations. That, that's what I, uh, I told Victor. Why it's gonna make things way, way, way more complicated. I'll show you exactly why in a second. Uh, in the calibration, as I said, we try in the long-term relationships to address a little bit, uh, uh, to have these people mix more than just by looking at divorce data Korea, you would see. Korea is really right. Uh, you've, got, you've got these uh, men who are going around, let's say, truck drivers. Right. Right. They have casual sex with uh, uh, prostitutes or, or otherwise. Right. Then they go back home. They infect their wives. Mm -hmm. And the the, the kids. And that you know that Corinne is exactly right. That is that is the you know the, the terrible mechanism. Right. So we are we are we have. Uh, we have the, the prediction of the model of the number of, of, of partners that you have, and uh, and we can compare that with the data. I'm not going to show that one. I don't have a slide for that today. We don't do a terrible job, uh, but I, I. But they have to be sequential in your model, I guess. That's it has to be sequential in one quarter. In one quarter, they're sequential. So in one quarter, you can only have you, can, you only get matched once. Yes, and you that, can't that's a restriction. Switch it, it, if you have a long-term relationship, as you said, it, it's an absorbing state. So 
so there's sort of no yes. way to have concurrency. Or yes. Concurrency. What I was talking about is that, you know, we have, think about this exogenous breakup as being a divorce. What we're going to have is that we're going to have this probability to, to be twice as much as in the data. That's just like a shortcut to get these guys mixing more. Okay, but allowing for concurrent is just really hard. Yeah, so the of that is to say we think of most relationships as short term, even if they are labeled some other time, that makes it most, mm -hmm. most action yeah. Most action will come from the short term. Yes, you're gonna have a lot of that. But I guess what she's worried about is the concurrent relations within the marriages. And this is how we're gonna allow for that, just like having these guys mix by a higher exogenous breakup rate. Maybe You can get infected during the relationship. Let, let me show you how HIV is, is going gonna, is gonna to get, get diffused here, and then you can okay. ask me a question if it's not clear. Okay. Actually, let's start now. Um, so if you have, if you have uh, uh, any kind of relationship, there's some probability that you're going to get infected. So, uh, so this gamma here is the known transmission probability. So for example, gamma P is the probability that I have sex with condoms, P for protected, with someone that is infected and I don't get the virus, okay? Which is higher that I get away from it if I use condoms than not. It's also higher if I'm a male than a female, okay? So in the long-term uh, relationships, I can get infected because I'm having unprotected sex a lot. So I can get infected during that relationship. If I marry someone who has, who has the virus, right, right. yeah. Well, yes. I cannot get two healthy people get matched and AIDS pop up. Right. Uh, I mean, maybe that's not an issue for matching the data. That's, I think, is what the concern is, that uh, perhaps you have these relationships in the data that uh, where clearly a lot of the transmission is coming from these adultery mechanisms that are being proposed. But in fact, your data is not Malawi, and there's very fewer models driven by your particular data, and maybe that's not a big issue. The concurrent relationships? Right. We have some data on that, but as you can imagine, it's not but great. But it is efficient there. I mean, as long as you're not being literal and matching, you know, long-term relationships and marriages, then I think it's okay. You can think of them, you can call them long-term relationships. Right. They, they break up much more frequently. Like you said, you're taking twice as far as maybe the right number of, you know, and so what's the match? So and I agree, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, th yes, exactly. Um, okay, so someone mentioned uh, the belief. So here, phi here is going to be my belief, so my prior probability that I'm infected. Uh, well, that I'm healthy. One minus phi is the probability that, that I carry the virus. Um, and then there's some lag from infection to symptoms. So I can get uh, the virus today, but symptoms are only going to show up some uh, periods down the road. That happens with probability alpha. Once you get the symptoms, then you die with, prob with probably delta 2. So that's what I said, that we're going to have some deaths coming from HIV and some deaths coming from other causes. And we assume that people with symptoms, that they know that they have HIV for sure, they just do not have sex. Okay, so we have all kinds of relationships here. We have long-term <coughs> relationships, we have protected, you can use condoms, you cannot use condoms. You match someone, how do you decide what you're going to do? So what we're going to have here is that we're going to have these three markets. So think of like three meeting places uh, that you can find someone there. So there is like one bar where you know, people go there for short-term relationships with condoms. And then there's another bar that people go there. And if you're there, you, you're gonna, if you get matched, you're going to have sex uh, without condoms or the long-term relationship. Each market is going to be characterized by some transfer that one party makes to another party, transfer T, and some average prevalence rates. So I know that if I go to the protected sex bar, there is 10% chance that I'm going to meet someone who's infected, and so on and so forth. Um, then uh, what's going to happen is that people are going to go in this market in sequential uh, 
uh, there's a sequential market structure, so you're going to first go to the long-term uh, relationship bar, and then you can match someone there. If you, if you want, uh, you're gonna, I'm going to make it more clear, you can search more or less in each of these bars. Uh, and uh, if you're not matched in the long term, then you can try to find someone in the short term market. Um, and in the short term market, you can search both protected and unprotected at the same time. So as I said, a person does not know f for sure whether he or she is sick. So there's the belief, phi, that I'm healthy. So depending on what I'm going to do each period, my belief is going to get updated. Um, so you need to update that belief, and we're going to use your prior belief. Uh, the fact that no symptoms occur, if, if all of a sudden you get the symptoms of AIDS, you have AIDS with 100% probability. And of course, the sex choices you make. So if you decide to go with an unprotected sex, there's a higher uh, likelihood that, that you're going to get infected. So how does this uh, updating take place? So let me show you just two uh, examples. One is, imagine someone that chose to be abstinent or, or didn't get matched, tried and did not get matched. So I have a, a probability phi that I'm healthy now. And the next period, what my probability is going to be, well, maybe I'm healthy, maybe I'm sick, and I just didn't show the symptoms. So this is pretty simple because you know, I didn't have sex. If I have sex, it's a bit more complicated. So, how can I be healthy next period? Well, maybe I'm healthy, and I just got matched with someone that's also healthy, so that's it. Or, I'm healthy, and I matched someone who was sick, but I got away with it. Okay? This can happen, but maybe I didn't show the symptoms because I was already sick, and the symptoms just didn't develop. Or, I was healthy, matched with someone who was sick, I didn't get lucky, so I, I got infected, and I just didn't show the symptoms. So you can, you can just roll these forwards and update your beliefs, depending, of course, uh, on these probabilities phi bar that are endogenous, because that's, those are the probabilities uh, oops, of each market you chose. Okay? So you cannot tell the other person my phi with phi. I'm sorry? You cannot go to a bar and say, my phi is this one. No. Your phi is your phi, and I can see your phi. I cannot see your phi, but I know that depending, if, if I go to the protected sex bar and there's 10% prevalence right there, I know there's a 10% chance that you're infected. No, there's a distribution over probability. I mean, I'm not sure how to phrase this, but you're saying you know the average probability in the bar, but you might look at somebody and think, uh, well, uh, this person looks uh, fairly uh, young, uh, maybe innocent, uh, maybe it's her first time here. Uh, yes, but in the model they all look very similar. <laughs> is the choice for negotiation proof? Is this choice? We go to the we go to the no to the common place. I would have an incentive to. Where the good guys work better. Um. If I had an incentive to reveal my type or. Oh yeah, that that you that. Then, now that the healthy guys are going to go there, it's, it's still it's still optimal to. So optimal. no, no, it, it's going to be out, th these markets have to clear, and 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 it's going to be optimal for everybody it's, who's. It's, it's, it's already in the no, in the condos market. Right. I'm already matched. Okay. And it can, we make an agreement say we are both likely to be healthy, why don't we not use condoms? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, I never thought of it, actually. It, I don't know. Do they, <coughs> do they have beliefs about the of a long-term partner? Say that again? Do they have beliefs about the... Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. long-term partner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For every... That evolves. Um, yeah. So... The same way they're all the same way, but, but given that, that it's not a choice to break up the match, uh, so we're going to stay in the match until some, some shock hits, that's only relevant when we break up the match. 
And that is exactly why uh, not having a concurrent relationships is, makes our life much easier. Because if I, if I could have some action on the side, then I'd have to take that into account. And that, that is exactly where the complication is. So I just wanted to come back and try this again. So in, in the market, it's not that everybody has the same fee. No. So it's not like you said, like, by the fact that I'm in this market, you know my fee. No, I know that. There's a, you know that there's, there's a distribution over fees. Is there no way to, there's no way to communicate? No, you only see the aggregate. So if, if the aggregate prevalence rate on that market is 10%, then that's it. From my perspective, there's a 10% chance that I'm going to match someone who is a... Uh, so when game theorists talk about cheat talk and such, I mean, I never really understood that, but it seems like they have mechanisms by which people um, elicit uh, information in situations like this. Right. That's not working. That's not. It's a stupid question. Never mind, I'll ask you later. Okay, yes, it's a stupid question. Ask me later. Uh, no, no, I, I have to. Oh, John, there's no distribution of fees. There's just distribution of beliefs. So P is just a statistic. One statistic. Yeah, so there's just a distribution of beliefs. beliefs. Okay. So if people, I would rather have sex with somebody who really believes that she didn't have uh, AIDS, even though, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no way of credit. Well, that's what I was trying to find out. Yeah. Um, okay, so that, that goes back to her point, right? That uh, we don't allow these concurrent relationships exactly because of, of this uh, updating of beliefs. Because uh, if you're in the long-term market, uh, that updating of belief is only relevant when you get out of it. Okay, so this is in pictures how it, how it looks and a heart is when sex happens. Um, so you start up here, and remember that I said that there's like this uh, Sequential, um, sequential market structure. So you first go into uh, the long-term market, and then you can get matched or not matched in that long-term market. If you're matched, that's it. You're going to continue uh, match until some probability, uh, some shock takes place, and that breaks it up. If you're not matched in the long-term market, in the short-term market, you can get matched either in the protected or unprotected uh, markets, or uh, not have sex that period, which, by the way, is a choice. If you don't want to search because things are too risky out there, you can costly, cost, costlessly do so. Um, so let me just, how much time do I have? We have 16 minutes and 30 seconds. 16 and 30 seconds. 29, okay. Um, so, uh, so there's no other state variable other than fee? I mean, like, like for example, your education or your wage? No, there's no heterogeneity across this dimension here. So there's no education and the wage is the same for everybody. Fees is the only state variable. Fees is the only state variable. And age, yeah. Age, there are two ages, right? You can be younger, mature, and your type. Remember there's the type, the two kind, the, the, the two patients. Here I'm, here I'm actually gonna show one, but yeah, so you have the A. No, you cannot. You cannot because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> Infer from what? From what? From the from which bar you are? The the phi bar is gonna tell me everything I can I can infer from which bar you are. Yes, but I, I mean, I, I got into the bar. I, I, met, I met someone. It has to be that you care. And you tell him as that is it relevant to the age of my prospective partner. No. You can't see the age. You no, can't. I can see it, but I can see it as it affect anything in the future or not. So How no, the only, the only, if I, if I have, if I have a, you, the 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 phi the is the only thing that matters, right? So what you're saying is that by looking at the age of someone, if someone is younger, uh, I I just think that that person didn't go through a lot in life and then it has a different structure of beliefs. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but by going by going to a market or another market, it just might be fuller of, of all the people. But that but but the age itself doesn't matter. All it matters is the phi, and the phi I know the the the, the aggregate phi in that bar I know. The age distribution I don't care. I care about the phi. 
From, my it's, a, it's your discount factor. Right. Yes. What Victor is saying is that if if that if that hap, uh, if that matters for for the person I meet, what I'm saying is that the age itself it doesn't. So if I already know the phi bar, as I call here in that market, I don't care. It's a lot of young people that did a lot of crazy things or all. Or it doesn't matter. No, all no, that matters is the phi bar. The same question again. It's not, the phi bar is not really sufficient if you could distinguish among the people in the bar. So but you can't. Suppose that you knew that somebody was old. Just yeah. Suppose, would you be able to use that information to make a better inference about the fee of that person? Yeah. For sure. Even though you know five bar. Oh, Even though. Question, why do you have age in the model? We have age in the model because we're, we're gonna match. We're gonna match these moments because people at different ages behave in different ways, and you know exactly. we're gonna have so more reckless people. What implication does that have for infection rates, for relationship creation, and so on? Right. So, of course, of course, like I, I know my age, and that's going to matter for my decisions. Uh, the only, the only thing that matters for the partner I meet is the phi, regardless of age. The only question here is if I infer from the age. Yeah. I mean, th people have different types also within that age. But, but so, I condition on age. Obviously, the distribution of phi is different. Because you just say the people at different age behave differently. So this is going to matter to infer phi. This is the answer. Then, if you cannot infer, because you're assuming that you cannot observe the age, and you cannot have sort of contra like Victor was proposing, like if I get infected, yeah, yeah. I punish you, and this is screening, is another point. But obviously matters. Right. That's the answer. So you cannot, you can, you cannot know age or phi of the person, all you know is that by going to the market, you know the phi bar, okay? This, this is the assumption. We can talk about the assumption afterwards now, okay? Um, so, so as I said, so y y when you go into, the, into that bar, you, have to y y you can search for, for a partner. So you can exert more or less effort, the, that's pi. So essentially you pick the probability that you're gonna get matched subject to a cost. Uh, if you're matched in the long-term market, then that's it. You're going to be matched in the long-term market until some uh, exogenous breakup happens. Or you're unmatched and then you go into the short-term market and something very similar is going to show up. You're going to decide some probability of finding someone in the protected and the unprotected markets. Um, the, the value function... So the value function... So you have some... So here's an example of a value function. So it's... Uh, Somewhat for a man that goes into the unprotected market, so you have the instantaneous utility of having sex, and then next period you can develop symptoms, in which case you get this utility A, that's the lifetime utility of living with AIDS and you're gonna die faster, or one minus that probability, um, life continues exactly the same way as today. It's very similar for women, very similar for protected, very similar for abstinence, very different for long term, because it's uglier, but the same idea carries it. My, when my partner long term relationship gets symptoms. When my, when my partner long term relationship gets symptoms, does it end the relationship or that ends the relationship, I go back to the single pool and I update my belief accordingly and imagine that you know I'm having sex for someone who developed symptoms for ten years, my belief is gonna go down substantially. Um, so uh, just the definition of equilibrium here, we're going to have the prices in all of three of these uh, markets, unprotected, protected, and long-term, that's going to clear the market. That is, we're going to have the same number of men and women uh, there. And of course, the aggregate HIV rates on each market for men and women are consistent with the, uh, with the individual behavior. So, uh, so we're going to parameterize uh, the model uh, to assess, as I said before, the effect effectiveness of different prevention policies. Yes? Uh, I may have said this, but what do you assume about the frequency of sex? So you, is, it, is, it, is it market being quarterly, and then you get matched, and then you do it like every day, or uh, once per quarter, or what is the... You do nine times per quarter, nine times per month. That's uh, what the mean that we find there. So essentially, that gamma that I showed you, we take that gamma... Uh, from the medical literature, we raise to the power of how many sexual acts people have on average. That's it. And, and this average is the same across the market? Uh, yeah. So I, 
That I have to check. That I have to check because I don't. I don't know how much information has. No, matched. Matched in the long term market. Oh, okay. I thought you meant if, if if a man wants to have sex, you, you need a woman. That's my point. Um, so we're gonna take we're gonna take this to the data to evaluate the, those uh, a variety of prevention policies. I'm gonna just talk about a few here. Um, uh, and we're going to calibrate the data with Malawi, as I said. Um, so we have, I'm gonna most of the data comes from the micro data of the d demography and, uh, demographic and health surveys. Uh, the HIV specific parameters like the probability of, of getting infected, et cetera, comes from the uh, medical literature. And also, you know, this is a rational model of, of, of HIV, so people need to know how HIV gets transmitted and, 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 and what they can do to reduce risk if they use condoms, et cetera. And we have survey data that shows that people in Malawi are very uh, familiar with all this. Um, is the stationary distribution unique? No. For example, you can think, so for example, imagine that we start, no, no, we don't have aid. So numerically, I cannot prove anything here, but numerically, you no, I'm concerned about uh, mapping, mapping the models to data uh -huh. when generically equilibrium is not unique. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. I cannot prove that it's unique. Clearly, there's another equilibrium which there's no AIDS out there. Done. That's an equilibrium. No AIDS is going to get diffused or anything. Numerically, we get one equilibrium, but I can't, I can't prove anything here. And we're gonna and we're gonna always hit that one. Yeah, and that, that's that's very hard to solve. No, no. So what I'm wondering is just uh, when you hit that equilibrium, is it stationary equilibrium? How do you know? The state yeah, I, I hit I hit a little bit. I mean, yeah. okay, I'll forget it. What's the number? If I if I hit a little bit, I go I go back there. But anyway. Um, so, um, so there's the divorce probability. So it's a quarterly model. So it's a divorce probability. As I said before, it's twice the, the probability, the divorce uh, uh, odds that we see in the data because you know we don't have collision in affairs. Um, and and uh, I just want to point out that we have the gammas, which is the probability of known infection uh, 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 for each uh, for each type of sexual act, protected and unprotected for men and women, that we take straight from uh, the medical literature. And there's some probability that once you get infected, you're going to develop the symptoms at around 10 years. So that pins down the probability and the probability that you die once you develop the symptoms. So 494 is per quarter? Per quarter. So 6% uh, chance of getting AIDS. Yes. So yes. I, I, per act, that's right there. Do you think it could maybe calibrate the epsilon a little bit better? We can talk about that, but uh, we can we can talk more about that. Uh, we we thought we thought a lot about uh, about how to calibrate that epsilon. We do some robustness analysis and some policy experiment on, on that epsilon in the paper. And you have a uniform transmission probability over the life cycle of the disease, right? So if I have HIV, and that's that's why I think concurrency is important to me, and you don't think it's important because in reality your chance of transmitting peaks at six weeks after you get the disease, and in your model you can't have sex with two people in that same period. So. In fact, people don't get HIV and then transmit to their spouse because actually they're Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I see, I, I see, I, point taken. I, I understand that, that uh, I totally understand your point. Um, um, we could simulate something closer to what you're talking about, but yes, I agree, I agree. So, um, so I, we set some parameters a priori. There were some parameters also that, um, that uh, we calibrate to some uh, data in Malawi. Um, so this is the model fit. So we target the HIV AIDS rate by, uh, by each gender, males and females. And then some uh, uh, moments uh, regarding sexual behavior. So percentage of sex that is casual, that is outside of, of long-term relationships. Percentage of casual sex in which condom is used. Uh, percentage of singles who had casual sex, so non-abstinent singles. Uh, percent of marriage, percent of deaths that are related to HIV and not. So, um, Which one goes wrong when you have the beta 1 equal beta 2? What about that list? What, what goes wrong? I don't remember. <laughs> Do you remember? No, so basically, we need a small group of people that engage in very risky behavior, otherwise, there's no HIV at all. Then you're always at the zero HIV. So it needs 
an heterogeneity and has a big consensus in the literature. I mean, some sort of crazy people, otherwise you never get heterogeneity. So it could, it could also work if heterogeneity took the form of some people having a huge craving for sex. Right. It doesn't yeah, have yeah. to be impatient. It could be just... It, 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 that that works. Yeah. Yeah. That would have wrong heterogeneity. beliefs. I mean, yeah. those guys don't update properly. That could also determine... Right. Yeah. What you so, I think, I think, um, I think we're, we're the most, the point that we're more off on is the, the, the percentage of marriage at age 20 and how, how fast people get married. Uh, and this 7% difference here for men and women is coming solely due to the fact that they are faced with different uh, infection probabilities, right? Nothing else. Um, so there's a lot, that there might be a lot more in the data that explains the difference. Which is very important. I'm going to show you another statistic. Um, so we have, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, non-targeted statistics that we also do pretty well. I w um, let me just quickly show two of them. Can you just ask who drives death from HIV? Why don't you match that directly? Since you told HIV rates exactly, all right? So you said HIV rate oh, yeah. is identical in the model. Right. So I mean, we have a model that prevents people uh, for I mean, we, we, have, we have a very, we have this constant probability, 0.125, that Which are? Risk and time preferences. Do you have any? The time, you mean the discount factors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wh which they are? I don't, I don't have here. What, what time preferences are you assuming? What risk attitudes are you assuming? I'm assuming uh, log utility and separable utility, uh, separable log utility, log felicity <coughs> utility and separable in their continuation value. With what discount rates? He wants to know the values of the betas. The yeah. value of the betas, I know it's close to 0 0.9 because it, uh, it also in, embeds the probability that you're going to survive, the delta probability. So it's beta, the usual macro beta, as you think, that I don't remember because there's some heterogeneity times I'm one minus beta. I just want to know the discount rate. <laughs> that's all. It's, 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 it's I, it's heterogeneous, right? So there's someone who's like 0.88, there's someone who's 0.90, there's someone who's 0.94. Okay. But that, the fraction of which, you know, I don't remember now. Um, so, so let me show you two. So this is the distribution of beliefs in the modeling, the data. So remember that people have beliefs and there, there are papers that elicit this belief uh, from data. So the model does a good job matching them. And uh, I just want to show you because we're asking the people that are non-abstinent singles over the life cycle. So we do a good job over the life cycle. In the beginning, we are higher than in the data. That's why people, the younger crowd is uh, having more casual sex. Okay, so let me show you, I have a two, one, two, two minutes. Uh, I'm gonna show you one, uh, one policy experiment, which is imagine that uh, you treat people for other sexually transmitted diseases and there's the literature that talks about that uh, that if you treat it for other sexual transmission diseases, that lowers your chance of getting infected with HIV rate. So if that uh, transmission uh, rate decreases, what happens to the HIV rate? It goes down. Uh, it goes down by less than if you hold uh, uh, your behavior fixed. That's what I'm calling this uh, column here, the epidemiological stuff, which tra changes the transmission probabilities, but keeps it fixed, the, the behavior uh, of agents. So you can see that the epidemiological uh, uh, experiment, HIV rate will decrease by more than in the full model. Why? Because people adjust in uh, their behavior in a few dimensions. So we have uh, uh, people having, for example, more casual sex. Another uh, experiment that we can do is that we can compare our full-blown model with what we call a small, a, a small field experiment. That is, if you go and treat only a small percentage of the population, <coughs> but small enough that's not going to change the aggregate levels, um, then what's going to happen is the opposite. The field experiment is going to say that the average prevalence rate is not going to decrease as much as the full-blown model. 
Why? Because it doesn't have this general equilibrium effect that once you lower the, the prevalence rate of some people, this is going to bring back the feedback loop and less people are going to get infected. Um, so the point that I want to emphasize with these two, th with these two experiments is that both the general equilibrium effects and these behavioral adjustments can be quantitatively important for the overall uh, uh, prediction of, of, of the policy. Okay, so this field experiment here, I'm keeping everything aggregate constant, right? Yeah. So what happens here is that there's a lower probability that if I have sex with someone who, uh, who, uh, who is infected, that I'm also going to get infected, right? So this lower probability is going to cause e the prevalence rates to go down, yeah. okay? The feedback loop comes from the fact that if I treat everybody, okay, then that's going to change the aggregate prevalence rate and the, the probability that I'm going to find someone who is uh, also healthy. Okay, and that also lowers, and that, that's the feedback loop that I was talking about. Here, because I'm keeping that constant, I don't have the feedback loop. Five minutes? No, zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so let me conclude. I also... I also want to say that for some policy experiments, so, uh, s of some analysis of incentivized people to use condoms might actually lead for HIV prevalence rate to initially go up because people in engage in riskier behavior before it eventually comes down. Even oh. though people engage in, in uh, safer, uh, pe more people use condoms, but they engage in more sex, that can have two opposing effects, and you can get like this known... Uh, there's no monotone thing that uh, condoms can lead at first to more uh, HIV. In the paper, a lot more experiments that Flavio doesn't let me talk about them. So let me conclude. So we, uh, we developed this uh, equilibrium model of sexual behavior that we calibrate to capture features of sex, uh, marriage, and HIV in Malawi that we use to conduct several policy experiments. We just showed you one very quickly, but we do a lot more in the paper, and we want to emphasize that some policies may actually backfire, like the one in condoms that I was talking about here. And also, uh, that general equilibrium effects and behavioral effects might be very important quantitatively, and is something that might be missed uh, using other complementary uh, techniques. Sorry, Flavio. <laughs>